In this video, I'm going to discuss what is called S-Ramp Acceleration. S-Ramp Acceleration is an option in all of our drives, starting with the Unidrive M100. This mode of acceleration offers an advantage over linear acceleration in most electromechanical systems. After we've learned what S-Ramps are and why they are beneficial, I'll then show you how to configure them in a Unidrive M700 that is operating in RFC-S or servo mode. So if you're ready, let's get started. Acceleration is defined as a rate of change of velocity. Acceleration comes into play whenever there is a change in speed in the drive. Acceleration is also bidirectional. That is, there is both positive acceleration and negative acceleration. Negative acceleration is commonly referred to as deceleration. Our drives offer two options for how to accelerate between changes in velocity. Linear, which is default, and S-ramp. Here's an oscilloscope trace that shows a change in velocity from 0 to 1500 RPM using a linear acceleration rate. Here is another oscilloscope trace that shows the same velocity change, however this time I'm using an S-ramp. Notice that with the S-ramp the transition areas of the trace are more rounded and gradual when compared to the linear. That difference is the primary advantage of using an S-ramp. An S-ramp is much easier on the mechanical components in the system and is therefore preferred whenever practical. I say whenever practical because not all applications can utilize an S-ramp. If your machine is making very fast moves in which the profile resembles a triangle as compared to a trapezoid, using an S-ramp might not allow the motor to achieve the desired speed due to the time lost during the S portion of the curve. Next, let's have a look at how to configure S-ramps in an M700. Even though I'm working with a Unidrive M700 in RFC-S or servo mode today, it's important to understand that S-ramps are available for all operating modes, including open loop. To begin using the ramp system, you've got to ensure that ramps are enabled. Most of the ramp parameters are located in menu 2. The parameters that will enable the ramp system are parameter 2.002, which is ramp enable, and that is on by default. And then the drive stopping mode, which is located in menu 6. Parameter 6.001 is set to coast by default. In that mode, the drive will use your acceleration ramp to accelerate the motor, but when a stop is active or the run signal is removed, the drive will coast to a stop and ignore your program deceleration ramp. There are also two options for how ramps are used in the drive. Parameter 2.004 is called ramp mode and the choices are either standard, which is the default setting, or fast. In standard mode, the drive will automatically adjust the slope of the deceleration ramp to ensure that the energy that is produced by the motor during deceleration does not adversely affect the DC bus in the drive and cause it to trip on an overvoltage trip. In fast mode, the drive will always honor your program acceleration and deceleration rates. If you're driving a load with high inertia, such as a solid nip roller or a winder, for example, this mode may not work for you unless you use a dynamic braking resistor to help dissipate the energy that is produced during deceleration. Now that the ramps are enabled in the drive, let's have a look at the options for using S-ramps. S-ramp options are located in menu 2. To enable the S-ramp generator, set parameter 2.006 to on. There's another parameter that affects all ramps in the drive, including S-ramps, and that is parameter 2.039, ramp rate units. This parameter offers you an option of how the drive calculates the slope of the acceleration ramps. By default, this parameter is set to off, and in this mode, the drive will use units of seconds per 1000 RPM when using synchronous motors, or seconds per 100 Hertz when using induction motors. For example, using the default setting of seconds per 1000 RPM, if the maximum reference clamp, which is parameter 1.006, is set to 3000 RPM as mine is today, and I have programmed an acceleration rate of one second to my desired speed of 1500 RPM, 
then the actual time for the acceleration will be 1.5 seconds. The other option for parameter 2.039 is to choose units of seconds to maximum speed or maximum frequency instead of seconds per 1000 RPM or seconds per 100 Hertz. Using my example of a one second acceleration rate to 1500 RPM, then the actual time for acceleration using these units will be 0.5 seconds. It is my opinion that using units of seconds to maximum frequency or maximum speed is a better choice. I say that because by choosing these units, the slope of the acceleration ramp will not change throughout the entire speed range of the motor. Since the slope of the acceleration ramp affects the power required to accelerate the load, using this option will not have any impact on the drive and motor chosen for your system, providing it was sized correctly in the first place. Now let's watch as I demonstrate the three different options for S-Ramps. Parameter 2.039 is used to choose which of the options for S-Ramps you'd like to use. The three options for this parameter are single, percentage, and independent. To make this somewhat clearer, another term for S-Ramp acceleration is jerk. Jerk is a physical property common to electromechanical systems and it is defined as the rate of change of acceleration. Acceleration, you'll recall, is defined as the rate of change of velocity. Jerk is employed during the four transitions that we looked at earlier. Let's see what single mode does. Here I have mConnect software open and I am connected to my drive and you'll notice I'm looking at menu 2. Menu 2 holds the options for acceleration and deceleration, including SRAM. So as we move down here, the parameter that you use to change the SRAM options are is here in parameter 41. By default, it's in single mode. And what that does is that uses another parameter that you see here, menu 2, parameter 7, as a limit, a maximum rate of change of acceleration. And by default, it's set to 30 milliseconds squared per 1,000 RPM. So you can get a better picture of what this effect is, I'm going to flip over to our software oscilloscope program now, CT Scope, and show you what this looks like. So let me move over to here. And I will start my trace. And this is what it's going to look like using the default settings. So as you can see, that's not much of an S. Very, very slight amount of curvature to these transition areas. But if I want to make that larger, I'll just increase my limit here, and I'll bump it all the way up to one second here, so we have a, a very definite noticeable change. And then I'll go back to CT scope, and we'll do another plot. Now when I run the drive here, you can see a pretty dramatic change in the shape of those S portions or the transitions. So single mode then, to summarize, uses a single limit programmed in parameter 7 as the maximum amount of change of acceleration during those four transitions. Now I'm going to change the value for menu 2, parameter 41, to percentage. This mode works a little differently. In this mode, the SRAMP percentage is programmed as a value right here in parameter 40. So by default, it's 0%, which of course would result in a linear ramp. But if I put a value, for example, of 10% in here, what that's going to do is that's going to use 10% of the ramp as the S portion of the curve. So it's not going to look like much, and I'll just show you this here with CT scope. So I'll start the scope trace here, and then I'll run my motor. So as you can see, it's a very, very subtle, very, very subtle little transition here and here. 
I'll bring my cursor in here. Maybe you can uh, get a little better picture of this. Looks like the one up on top is a little easier to see. So I'll put that there. And I'll put this at what I perceive to be about the start of it, which is right there. Let me zoom in on this. There we are. So you get a little better pic picture here. It's a little bit of an S. And I'll bring my cursors back. And let's see what that looks like. So we'll say from about right there. Uh, looks like it's about, starts about right there. Yeah, um, recall that I've got my ramp rate unit set to max speed now. So even though I've got a one second acceleration rate, the actual acceleration to 1500 RPM is 0.5 seconds. So when you look at this period here, the measurement, 44 milliseconds, well, that's roughly 10% of 500 milliseconds. So um, that does appear to be working. Now, this parameter has a maximum as well. So in this mode, I can only set SRAMP to 50%. That's the limit. Now, what that's going to look like is that's going to use half of my Axel ramp and half of the D cell ramp to form the S. So as you can kind of see here, the way that this in 50%, it comes up and then it immediately starts the S. So the entire shape of the Axel and D cell is now an S as opposed to the percent in the beginning and the end of our transitions. The last option we have available for SRAMP setup mode is going to be independent. And in this mode here, it allows you to adjust independently each of the acceleration limits for each of the four transition areas. I kind of like this one. Practically speaking, your S is really going to be when you are starting and stopping. So in this example, I'll go ahead and put in a time of, oh, let's say, let's make it uh, one second there. And at the top here, I'll put that to, oh, I don't know. We'll make that 50. And then as it begins accelerating in the negative direction towards zero, I'll do the same. And then we'll put one second on the end as well. So there's my profile. Now let's go see what that has, looks like with CT scope. All right, so I'm going to start my trace and let's run it. Oh, yeah. See what that did? The S is applied during the first transition, but up here, once we're up to speed, there is uh, no S here. And when we begin ac accelerating in the negative direction or decelerating, there's very, very little uh, of an S on those transitions. And then the S is again repeated on the end. So that is the independent mode of operation for S ramps. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative, and if you have any questions, I can be reached at the email shown here. Please refer to the training section of our website for more information about our training courses and to see our current training schedule.